assalamu alaikum and uh, good evening everybody all my students and viewers uh, let me introduce myself actually i am professor m mutin uh, at the moment working as, uh, as head of the department of otolaryngology and head neck surgery so it's throughout the uh, medical college hospital dhaka uh, thank you very much uh, axis medical school this is my first lecture from the platform of axis medical school uh, thank you the organizer to uh, give me opportunity to uh, deliver my lectures here uh, although i have been taking lecture in uh, other forum so this is my first class actually today uh, we will discuss about uh, ent ospi you know actually this is the uh, very important topics for exam because ospi is very important you will be given uh, from uh, ent and and i actually the surgery second part you will be given 10 ospi five from ent and five from i or ophthalmology now from the uh, ent point of view out of five ospi I usually we give uh, two x ray two instruments and one specimen or one any graph or any tracing paper like audiology sometimes you will be given one x ray so it depends on actually but the x ray or radiology is very important so you don't need to uh, study all the x ray only very very important x ray which is commonly given in the exam and that i will discuss and i hope uh, it will be helpful for you and regarding any topics of the radiology or x ray i will also give some outline of the disease as well so that you will have a very quick review of the disease as well but if you have a time actually so we started late, uh, a bit late today uh, i think it will be okay uh, and i hope you all are well in this uh, corona pandemic uh, so this is very painful for all of us that we are staying at home we don't have any work still we, are, we have some academic exercise so let's start with the x ray and i will be given i will be just showing you very very important exam oriented or exam topics of x ray uh, so let's see how it goes now this is uh, one of the important x ray for your exam uh, in any x ray usually four questions are uh, coming from this number one is uh, describe or read the x ray number one point number two point give your positive findings number three point what is your diagnosis and number four point how do you treat this patient or what are the complaints in all around but the main thing is the systematic way we usually get okay describe the x-ray first and then second is keep your positive findings what you see here and number three is your what is your radiological diagnosis and number four how do you treat this patient not only this x-ray any x-ray so these are the four points you remember for any disease concern you have to know this now look at this x-ray so this is now first is discuss the x-ray so it's a x-ray soft tissue nasopharynx who is new lateral view so this is the description you will get if 0.5 marks 0.5 marks one mark one mark so there is no question of cutting any marks in your ospi if you are very good okay so first thing is the x-ray soft tissue nasopharynx lateral view next is what is the positive findings it, it shows a increased soft tissue shadow increased soft tissue shadow or enlargement of the soft tissue shadow in the nasopharynx obstructing look at this here the nasopharyngeal airway look at this airway down here and look at the airway the nose so airway is coming up from here and from here to here but here the, the mass completely block the airway look at this the soft tissue shadow touching the soft palatal uvula so it's nearly completing uh, blocking the airway so my finding is increased soft tissue shadow in the nasopharynx obstructing the nasopharyngeal airway next is what is your, your radiological diagnosis so my radiological diagnosis is adenoid or enlarged adenoid next question is uh, mention four common symptoms and how will you treat this patient as you know any adenoid how the patient presents as you know the patient has got nasal obstruction number one mouth breathing okay patient may have 
snoring at night, dribbling of saliva from the angle of the mouth, that's when you have sleep apnea. And these adenoids can block the eustachian tube. So causing some oral symptoms like your uh, recurrent earache, acute otitis media, patient lead to otitis media with effusion or OME. So patient usually have conductive hearing loss or deafness. So if the patient has got deafness, his school performance will be going down. That means IQ will be down. His language will be slow. So these are all the features of adenoid. Also, due to the persistent blockage of the airway and mouth breathing, the patient's facial skeleton is changes uh, leading to adenoid features like your uh, higher palate, uh, prominent insert teeth, spongy gums, uh, depressed nasal level furrow, uh, low IQ. So all these are the features, but you have to pick out only four. So nasal obstruction, mouth breathing, uh, dipping of saliva, sonic at night, hearing loss or contact with deafness. How to treat adenoid? Or oh, usually uh, patient needs surgical treatment. So we'll go for adenoidectomy under GA, under general anesthesia. Uh, what are the different methods of adenoidectomy? Usually we go with the adenoid curator and case. So we'll curate the adenoid with adenoid curate and case. But I am doing sometimes coblation adenoidectomy. So we can also do coblation adenoidectomy operation. Uh, sometimes in this regard, in this X-ray, there are many questions can come up in X-ray rather than this question, like what are the complications of this surgery? So complication of adenoidectomy operation, common complication is hemorrhage, uh, primary hemorrhage, reaction hemorrhage. Uh, as you are using the boiled Davis mouth gap, so you can injure the teeth, tongue. Uh, you can also, during the cure test, you can injure the nasopharyngeal uh, mucosa. You can injure the Eustachian tube opening, this will lead to tubal stenosis. You can injure the uh, cervical vertebra. So these are the common complication of the surgery. So that is all about adenoid, adenoid phases, complaints of adenoid, and adenoid can lead to otitis media with division or OME and conductive deafness. So that is all about this X-ray. Don't forget this X-ray. This is very important X-ray. Now, if you could see it, in other uh, uh, question on this, what are the DD rather than asking what is your diagnosis? Sometimes you go, what is your diagnosis? So the, my diagnosis is endless adenoid. But if I ask this question, tell me two or three differential diagnosis. Three differential diagnosis, then how to write? So number one is endless adenoid. Number two, think of any soft tissue mass in nasopharynx. Like your classical one is your anteroconal polyp. Number two, number three is your juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. In old age, patients may have nasopharyngeal carcinoma, but any soft tissue mass in the nasopharynx, classically you will have anthroponal polyp, you will have nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Now, suppose this is a case of anthroponal polyp. How to understand how to dif uh, differentiate this? You will get this air column back of this shadow. In case of anthroponal polyp, the air column is posted to the soft tissue shadow. Or in adenoid, the air column is entered to the soft tissue shadow. So that's, that is the tricks. And there's all questions about adenoid. Uh, this is like another X-ray. Now, how to describe the X-ray? The X-ray nasal bones, lateral view, or X-ray face, lateral view. What is the finding? It's showing that there is a fracture in the nasal bone with no displacement. Look at this, there's a tear or fracture here, but there is no displacement. So this is a fracture of the nasal bones at the mid part or middle part of the nasal bones without any displacement. Uh, what is the diagnosis? My diagnosis is fracture nasal bone. Diagnosis fracture nasal bone. Uh, how do you treat this patient? Well, the patient needs manipulation of fracture nasal bone by digital pressure. Usually you give digital pressure, but it depends on actually it simply you can write down manipulation of fracture nose under local anesthesia or if it's still done under GA with TP, digital pressure. But sometimes uh, there are different way of treatment like how to treat fracture nose. It depends on when the patient comes. If the patient uh, has come early without any swelling or any edema, then you can immediately go for 
reduction of the fracture by digital pressure or manipulation of fracture by digital pressure. But if the patient comes late, like patient has got swollen nose, face is very much swollen, then you have to have a look to the nose to see is there any septal hematoma. If there's no septal hematoma, then you ask, uh, give some antibiotic, analgesic, nasal drops, and ask the patient to come one week later when the patient's swelling will reduce, and then you assess the patient and go for manipulation. So this is the simple way of treatment of this case. Okay, so this is all about fracture nodes. Usually we give this question in the uh, sometimes uh, short as a question about the short nodes, but in the oral exam also we can ask this question. But this is very good X-ray for the exam. Fracture nasal bone. This is another very very important X-ray for OSPI for exam. Now, what do you see? First thing is this cap, the X-ray. So this is a plain X-ray of mastoid. Look at this, this is a, this is a temporal bone for lying the mastoid cells here. This is another temporal bone. So this is an X-ray mastoid, uh, Towns view. Who is view? Towns view, T-O-W-N apostrophe S, Towns view. Now, what is the finding? Now, finding is there is a large circular, Radiolution shadow. Look at this here. Large circular radiolution shadow in the left tympanomastoid region. Tympanomastoid region. The right tympanomastoid region shows multiple air cells like a honeycomb. Look at this. Multiple air cells from here to here. So there's a difference between the two sides. This is the left side. This is the right side. So this X-ray mastoid towns view showing a large circular radiolution shadow in the left tympanomastoid region with sclerosis margin, but the right tympanomastoid area shows multiple ER cells like honeycomb appearance. Next is what is your diagnosis? Or if I say no diagnosis, so tell me three dimensional diagnosis. The first thing is, what is your diagnosis? My diagnosis is cholesteatoma. Cholesteatoma in the left middle ear cleft. Because we don't know actually, it can, it can be in the mastoid antrum, Mastery air cells and middle ear. So it's better to write is a cholesteatoma in the left middle ear cleft. What are the DD? If it's a 2 DD, so only, only 2 DD here. One is uh, carcinoma of the middle ear cleft or cancer of the middle ear. Number two, with destruction of the bones. And number two is a post mastoidectomy cavity. Post mastoidectomy cavity. That is after mastoid operation, we usually drill the bones, we make a good cavity, ear cavity, and that cavity is filled up with the ear. So it can also look like this. So after post mastoidectomy cavity. These are the definitional diagnosis, DD. Now, how to treat this patient? For the students, actually, any patients with cholesteatoma, this is one of the chronic suppurative otodysmedia, ethical type of disease or disease with squamous type. So only one treatment. No other treatment, no other medical treatment. As is obvious cholesteatoma, so your treatment is surgical. And one treatment, what is that in cholesteatoma? It's a modified radical mastoidectomy with tympanoplasty. That is the answer. Modified radical mastoidectomy with tympanoplasty. That is the answer for chronic separated water media, atricontral type, or with cholesteatoma. And, in, and this question will be asked in the exam, very much in the oral exam. What is the answer for CSM atricontral type? So there's answer. How do we treat? Is a modified radical mastoidectomy with tympanoplasty. Uh, right for complication of your treatment. So what are the complications of this mastoid surgery? Now we know there is when we do the operation, there are important structures all around the mastoid. Uh, posteriorly, you'll have a very important nerve. It's called facial nerve. So this is a common complication is you can injure the facial nerve, number one. Number two, you can injure the dura mater. Posturally, you can injure the sigma sinus, uh, causing torrential bleeding or hemorrhage. And then medially, the patient has got inner ear or labyrinth. So you can injure the labyrinth, leading to profound sensory neural hearing loss. This is the common complication of mastoid surgery. Uh, injure the facial nerve, 
injury to dura mater, injury to sigmoid sinus, and injury to labyrinth, leading to sensory neural hearing loss. So these are the common complications. In this regard, we ask this question in the exam. Tell me about mastectomy operation. What are the different types of mastectomy operation? As you know, number one is simple or cortical mastectomy. Uh, number two is uh, modified radical, and number three is radical mastectomy operation. Indication of uh, simple mastectomy or cortical mastectomy is as you, your acute mastitis, cubotemporic type of CSM. When we are not getting drier, to get the drier, we can also go for cortical mastectomy operation. Uh, we can also do as a route to other operation like your cochlear implant, like your endolympic sac decompression, like transmastoid labyrinthectomy operation. These are the indication of cortical. Modified radial mastectomy operation, only one indication is your polycystic coma. That means chronic saprodip or media, atrochondral type or with cholesterol. Radical mastectomy operation indication is your uh, malignant otitis externa, uh, CSOM with intracranial complication or with your cancer of the middle ear cleft. So that is all about this X-ray and related questions. Uh, don't forget complication of mastoid surgery and don't forget treatment of cholesterol is modified radical mastoid with implant why I am asking this repeatedly because you'll forget in the exam. The simple question you, you will uh, fail to answer. That's why I'm deliberately saying this one. Don't forget this. So this is another X-ray. Again, the same way. So this is the, here the problem. Uh, so X-ray master town's view. showing a large circular resolution shadow in the, this is the right tumor master region with sclerosis margin, but the left tumor master region shows multiple air cells like honeycomb. So my diagnosis is cholesterol in the right Middle cleft. We discussed this one. Now, this actually the CT scan, you'll never given this CT scan in your exam. This is for postgraduate students actually. Uh, but you see how nicely the CT scan can perform because do, we ask this question in the exam. Suppose a patient has got cholestoma in the middle cleft with suspected intracranial complication or cholestoma in the middle cleft. Which one do you suggest? Do we do a plain X ray, Towns view, or you'll do CT scan? Nowadays, actually, we prefer CT scan. Even any patient coming from village, remote area, illiterate, they always say to us, doctor, please do CT scan. So there are so much use of CT scan nowadays. They say, oh, well, doctor, you do ultrasonogram of my ear. How funny. Because there are so much use of with this ultrasonogram, with CT scan. They are very much literate on this medical ground rather than the original uh, literacy, you know? That's why, but Usually we don't give this one to make you confused, but sometimes you can give this one. So this is CT scan of the temporal bone. Look at this. This is the temporal bone. And this measure shows a large circular resolution shadow in the temporal bone. Uh, and this is the inner ear. Look at this, the cochlea. This uh, semicircle canal here, the external canal, the middle ear clip, and the incision tube. So, but here's the finding. So this is actually a CT scan of the temporal bone showing cholestoma, huge cholestoma. But this is not for your exam, just for your awareness that, that this is the view of the CT scan, how nice. Okay, but this is not your uh, exam X-ray. This is another uh, X-ray, very common X-ray for sinuses. You'll be given this X-ray very frequently. Now, again, read the X-ray. So this is the X-ray paranasal sinuses. Who is view? Occipital mental view. So X-ray paranasal sinuses, occipital mental view. What is the finding? The positive finding is there is a, uh, the right maxillary sinus is completely opaque or hazy. So you can say the haziness in the right maxillary sinus or right maxillary sinus is completely opaque. The left maxillary sinus, the ethmoidal cells and frontal sinus are resolution or normal. There is also a septal deviation or septal spar towards the right side. So think of that. This is the bonus point. If you don't write this one, I think it will be, no, it will be okay. But if you write this one, the examiner will be very satisfied that your, your eyes are very keen, very sharp, okay? So X-ray panel sinuses, oxygen mental view showing right back to sinus is completely opaque or hazy. Left maxillary sinus normal, ethmoid abscess normal, frontal sinus normal. Also, we notice there is septal deviation or septal spar towards the right side. What is your diagnosis? So, my diagnosis chronic 
maxillary sinusitis. This part is enough, but you can also write chronic maxillary sinusitis with septal deviation to the right side. As you know, DNS can cause sinusitis. So this is one of the important factor here. Okay. Uh, so you can write right side and chronic maxillary sinusitis. Uh, you can also write with, with, with septal deviation to the right side. So this is a finding. Then question is, write down the clinical features of the disease. Now, as you know, the sinusitis is a disease, common complication of, sorry, common features of sinusitis or symptoms of sinusitis is your nasal discharge, nasal blockage or nasal obstruction, then your disturbance of uh, in the smell. So the three things are important. One is discharge, blockage, and smell disturbance. These are three important clinical features. And then number four is your facial pain or headache. Person may have facial pain, person may have headache, person may have dental uh, pain, okay? So these are the common features. Person may have malaise, person have fever, but usually in chronic sensory, usually person doesn't have any fever or anything, only nasal discharge, nasal obstruction, uh, or nasal blockage, disturbance of smell, and anosmia, all this. And also patient may have post-nasal drip. If you examine the patient's nose, you will get nasal uh, pus in the middle meters, or congested nasal mucosa. So these are clinical features of this condition. Now, how do you treat this patient? They said, what is the surgical management of this disease? So as they say surgical management, so you will write only the surgical management, one, two, three, only point, because the OSPI, you don't uh, write a thesis, okay? This is the only OSPI, write one, two, three. So surgical management, number one, is in the form of enteral washout, or enteral lavas, number one point. Number two point is your functional endoscopic sinus surgery. That should be the best option. This is the best option that functional endoscopic sinus surgery or face. Enteral washout you can do. And number three, uh, internal entrostomy. And number four, Carl Dweller operation if all it fails. That means this question we asked in the, in the exam, what are the surgical options available for chronic maxillary sinusitis? So surgical options available, there are four surgical options. One is enteral washout. Number two, intranasal entrostomy. Number three, functional endoscopic sinus surgery, and number four, called oil lac operation. So these are surgical options. But here, anyone you can choose, but if you only want to write one, that is functional endoscopic sinus surgery. As the patient has the septal deviation, I will also, also go for septoplasty operation. So my treatment will be septoplasty with right face, functional endoscopic sinus surgery. Functional endoscopic sinus surgery. Now, apart from this discussion, if we say, what are the management of chronic maxillary sinus surgery? So don't forget medical management. So sir, I will start with the medical treatment first in the form of uh, one antibiotic, cipofloxacin or levofloxacin, then nasal decongestant, antazole drops or steroid nasal drops and spray, and antihistamine. If it has got facial pain, you get painkiller. Usually it improves. If not, then I'll go for surgery. So that is all about sinus infection or sinusitis. Now, if the question is coming up, what are the DD of this X-ray? This question may come in other X-ray with this. So DD, or, or rather than uh, your diagnosis, they can write, okay, tell me three DD, rather than asking real diagnosis. So one diagnosis is, or DD is chronic maxillary sinusitis. Number two is antral polyps, the polyps loading in the antrum. Number three is carcinoma of the maxillary antrum or you can have carcinoma grant, or you can have uh, Ringer's papilloma. Okay, so, so these are the common DD of the haziness in the right maxillary sinuses. This is another important X-ray for exam. Now, this X-ray parallel sinuses, occipital mental view, showing haziness in the right maxillary sinus, as well as, look at this, the soft tissue shadow in the right nasal cavity. Or you can say the right nasal cavity, as well as right maxillary sinus is completely opaque. So haziness in the right maxillary sinus, as well as soft tissue shadow or haziness in the right nasal cavity. Left nasal cavity, other sinuses are, are normal. Next question is, 
what is your diagnosis so this is obvious my diagnosis right sided antero coanal polyp because antero coanal polyp coming from the maxillary sinus and then it fill up the nasal cavity and and nasal pharynx so this is the number one is right sided always mention the side not don't forget so right sided antero coanal polyp now if i say tell me some dd what are the dd so dd may be it can be a uh, ringer's papilloma because there's also coming from the maxillary sinus to the nasal cavity so ringer's papilloma or inverted nasal papilloma or inverted papilloma number 2 is sinonasal malignancy sinonasal malignancy or carcinoma of the maxillary antrum or any other sinonasal tumor or cancer okay so this is the dd now as this antrochoral polyp uh, mention three treatment options three treatment options for antrochoral polyp what are the options so one option is uh, as you know before the age of uh, below 14 or 16 years we can go for intranasal antro uh, uh, intranasal polypectomy and enteral washout so number one option number two option endoscopic sinus surgery or face endoscopic sinus surgery or face and number three option is your if the patient's age is above 16 or or above then we can also go for called wildlife operation or sub labial enterostomy called wildlife operation so these are the three surgical options for antrochoral polyp which is the best option the best option is classical is endoscopic sinus surgery or face that is the best option or we have also internal polypectomy we have also called wildlife operation in this regard complication of caldalac operation indication of caldalac operation as you know we have come up so this is the not your exam x ray because this is uh, like look at this the ct scan so this is a coronal ct scan of carnal sinuses uh, this card shows a soft tissue mass in the uh, left maxillary sinus and is coming up to the nasal cavity so this is a one type of antrochoral polyp or or, uh, or ringer's papilloma but this is not for you this is for you again the same way identify the excess so x ray parallel sinuses occipital mental view uh, showing uh, haziness in the right maxillary sinus uh, other sinuses are normal so this is another x ray of uh, chronic maxillary sinusitis in the right side and different diagnosis as i said this is sinusitis enteral polyp or entrocoronal polyp then sinusoidal malignancy or carcinoma of the maxillary antrum uh, ringer's papilloma Uh, again there is another x ray so x ray panel sinuses occipital mental view finding is there is a haziness in the right maxillary sinus with air and fluid level this is very important look at the level air and air and fluid level so this is the x ray panel sinuses occipital mental view showing haziness in the right maxillary sinus with air and fluid level left maxillary sinus other sinuses are normal so what is your diagnosis so my diagnosis is acute maxillary sinusitis on the right side so i can say right sided acute maxillary sinusitis now why because of the ear and fluid level so ear and fluid level indicates acute sinusitis in case of chronic sinusitis either is that there will be radial opacity or there will be mucosal thickening but here ear and fluid level so this is acute sinusitis let next it uh, how do you treat this patient acute sinusitis as you know patient how are what the presentation patient may have uh, nasal discharge uh, temperature high as a temperature patient have facial swelling patient may have full uh, on discharge postural drip malaise you know fever and if you see the nasal cavity you will get very much angry looking or congested nasal mucosa you can get a pass in the middle meters so this is all about acute sinusitis now how to treat of course the patient need medical treatment in the form of antibiotic uh, if you don't remember any antibiotic comoxiclop is the classical treatment or you can give uh, levofloxacin or ciprofloxacin but here comoxiclop can work uh, uh, in case of adult 625 mg tds in case of children 325 mg or syrup uh, we can give nasal decongestion like dalmedazolin or oxybenzone nasal
steroid another spray and uh, so and if the medical treatment fails then you can go for uh, surgery like anaplasma or endoscopic sinus surgery uh, this is the again ct scan so you are on free level uh, you don't need this is the coronal ct scan for sinus sinuses uh, showing a soft tissue shadow in the uh, left right maxillary sinuses and polypoid changes in the ethmoid regions so this is a case of bilateral nasal polyps With, with, with retention of secretion or sinusitis. This is a coronal CT scan of sinuses showing uh, subtissue mass uh, in the right maxillary sinuses with erosion of the orbital floor as well as erosion of the medial wall. So this is a typical case of sinus nasal malignancy. This is another case of subtissue mass in the left uh, nasal cavity, maxillary sinuses, uh, eroding the bones, medial wall of the maxillary sinus. as a lateral wall going to the infratemporal fossa so this is a sinus malignancy but this is not for you this is a classical x ray uh, classical x ray uh, this is a x ray soft tissue neck x ray soft tissue neck lateral view what are the points the points is uh, there is increased pre vertebral soft tissue shadow number one point number two point ear column is pushed forwards number 2 number 3 point the contour of the circle vertebra is normally convexity forward but here concavity forwards concavity forwards and the number 4 point is ear and fluid level in the soft tissue area so my diagnosis acute retropharyngeal abscess this is very classical x ray for exam acute retropharyngeal abscess okay so why the circle vertebral column is concave or or, or straight due to contraction of the pre vertebral muscle okay uh, what is the reason of gas shadow gas shadow is usually gas forming organism like e coli treatment of this condition incision and drainage of retrophange abscess without anesthesia the patient is kept in supine position with head down mouth is open with boiled is mouth gag and the we will give a local spray and we stab the uh, the abscess over the maximum bulging point and then immediately Uh, put the patient the head down and lateral position and suck out all the passes and then give intravenous antibiotic uh, safe track zone and flagell painkiller that is a treatment option for this this is another uh, x ray soft tissue uh, x ray neck lateral view showing uh, increased pre vertebral soft tissue shadow ear column pushed forwards cervical vertebral column straight and ear and fluid level echo retropharyngeal abscess this is a plain x ray neck and chest uh, interposter view showing a large circular radio opaque shadow in the root of the neck uh, diagnosis is your foreign body especially uh, is it most likely coin in the hypopharynx or is is pegas that has to be confirmed by lateral x ray how to treat only one treatment is endoscopic removal of foreign body under ga endoscopic removal of foreign body under ga complication during the endoscopic procedure or esophagoscopy we usually do under ga you can injure the teeth you can injure the tongue uh, pharynx uh, and or you can tear the esophagus that's when i have esophageal perforation and cs condition and leading to mediastinitis as a complication of general anesthesia patient have aspiration pneumonia this is the lateral view excess soft tissue a uh, neck lateral view showing a, a radio uh, linear radio opaque shadow in the pre vertebral region at the level of first second third fourth fifth sixth so at at the level of fifth and sixth cervical vertebra so my diagnosis is foreign body in the upper end of the esophagus treatment endoscopic removal of foreign body under ga this is another a, a linear radio opaque shadow excess of tissue neck lateral view showing linear radio opaque shadow in the pre vertebral region at the level of first second third fourth so third fourth and fifth so at the level of fourth and fifth cervical vertebra so my diagnosis foreign body most likely mid bone in the hypopharynx because this is fourth and fifth if it is six the esophagus so this in the hypopharynx treatment endoscopic removal of foreign body under ga complication i discussed this is another x ray neck and chest uh Interposter view showing a linear uh, radio opaque shadow, obliquely placed 
in the central part of the chest, little bit in the right side. Uh, so my diagnosis is, is a, a foreign body in the right principal bronchus. Uh, the patient presents with respiratory distress sometimes. Uh, the, the parents give a history of that. Patient have some bougie sound. So we have to treat this patient with endoscopic renewal. That means we have to do rigid bronchoscopy and renewal of foreign body under GA. This is classical uh, X-ray. For example, this is a contrast X-ray. This is the barium swallow X-ray of esophagus. Barium swallow X-ray of esophagus showing huge dilatation of the esophagus along the whole length, excepting the lower end, which shows smooth narrowing like a pencil tip. So this is the barium swallow X-ray of esophagus showing huge dilatation of the esophagus along its whole length, excepting lower end with smooth narrowing. And there's also some residual negative shadow in the esophagus indicating residual food debris. So what is the diagnosis? My diagnosis is achalasia cardia. Achalasia cardia. DD actually uh, in here, it can be a carcinoma esophagus, but here the esophagus carcinoma, uh, you will not get like that. You will get a Chagas disease, another disease. We can also uh, uh, get this type of X-ray. Uh, how to treat this patient? The treatment of patient is uh, sometimes to go endoscopic uh, dilatation, but before that, we usually give a esophageal laves to reduce uh, the food particle from the esophagus and then endoscopic uh, dilatation. That means dilatation of the lower esophageal sphincter by Mercari bujis, but nowadays we are using pneumatic bujis, balloon, by the endoscopist, by the gastroenterologist rather than ENT surgeon. So endoscopic dilatation of the lower is the sphincter uh, with Mercari bujis or by uh, pneumatic balloon. This is the common, uh, one of the important uh, treatment. Another treatment is, different treatment is uh, surgical treatment that is called cardiomyotomy by Heller's procedure or Heller's cardiomyotomy. We have some medical treatment like anti uh, 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 nifidipine, that means calcium channel blocker, we can use nifidipine. We can also use some, we can destroy the sphincter by botulinum toxin or Botox. These are the treatment options for aclasia cardia. This is the lower isthmus sphincter, fails to relax uh, during swallowing due to degeneration of the mitric flexor. This is the aclasia cardia. This is the classical X-ray for exam. Again, barium soil X-ray of esophagus showing irregular filling defect in the lower end of the esophagus with uh, slightly proximal dilatation and looks like a rat tail. It looks like a rat tail. So what is the diagnosis? My diagnosis, carcinoma of the lower end of the esophagus. Carcinoma of the lower end of the esophagus. Now, DD is a stricture of the esophagus. It's an important DD. Benign stricture of the esophagus, but it's a carcinoma of the esophagus. Irregular filling defect. Irregular filling defect. In case of stricture, benign stricture, you'll have a regular filling defect. But here, irregular filling defect. Now, how do you confirm your diagnosis? by endoscopy, flexible or rigid endoscopy and get a biopsy. Mostly this is a squamosal carcinoma. Uh, carcinoma esophagus usually is called squamosal, but it can be adenocarcinoma uh, in the lower end. But how to treat? Uh, patient, different treatment options. Prognosis is very bad. Uh, usually we can excise this part. So excision of the lower end, and then we can make anastomosis with the uh, stomach or with the colon, or we're going to have free jejunal graft we can have uh, radiotherapy, palliative chemo radiation. Uh, we can have feeding jejunostomy. Uh, if you can pass a NG tube, but it's impossible sometimes, then we can go for feeding gastrostomy or feeding jejunostomy. This is another X-ray, uh, uh, X-ray floor of the mouth, <clears throat> paraoclusal view, showing a radio opaque shadow in the floor of the mouth opposite the second molar tooth. So my diagnosis uh, is a stone in the right submandibular duct. The patient usually presents with a swelling in the submandibular region when he eats and drink, painful swelling. Every time he eats and drink, there is swelling. And treatment is either you have to take that stone out parallelly or you can excise the submandibular gland with stone. There is some complication of this operation, of uh, excision of submandibular gland, like you're injured to the uh, marginal mandibular nerve, you can injure the lingual nerve, we can injure the hypoglossal nerve. <clears throat> I am doing a bit fast because I have another class next. Now this is a, a CD scan of the 
uh, of the uh, brain, uh, which is showing a, a large resolution with hyper uh, quick uh, shadow in the cerebral region, the left cerebral. So this is a cerebral abscess from uh, from the CSOM. Uh, this is actually another uh, MR scan of the, showing the temporal lobe abscess and cerebral abscess. But this is not for you. Uh, this is the MRI scan of the brain, including CP angle, cerebral frontal angle, showing a uh, hypertension area in the CP angle. And this is a classical MRI scan of acoustic neuroma or CP angle tumor or vestibular suonoma. This acoustic neuroma usually presents with unilateral sensorineural hearing loss, patient may have uh, vertigo, patient have pain, loss of coronary reflex. But most important is unilateral, profound sensory neural hearing loss, usually is a patient, about 60, 70 years old or 80 years old patient usually presents with this. But this is actually uh, not for you actually, not for MBBS. Okay, so I think I think uh, that's all about today's uh, OSPI. Uh, in next class, in uh, coming Tuesday, inshallah, we'll discuss other parts of the OSPI like your instruments, like specimen and some tracing. And then I will start oral examination. So I will take all the uh, exam oriented topics like OSPI, oral examination, how we'll uh, ask questions about the oral examination. So thank you very much uh, for the viewer. Today I, I am going to stop. Uh, thank you very much. I think this is very important topics for your exam. And thank you, uh, Access Medical School, for giving me opportunity to say a few words about this. And see you in next class. Thank you very much indeed. And have a nice uh, night.